Okay, this video is meant to be a review over the exponent rules. So I'm gonna go over the exponent laws here and then we're gonna go on and do an example that illustrates a bunch of these rules together. So we're just gonna go through these real quick here. So first of all, uh, when you have the first one, if you're multiplying two things with the same base, you're gonna be adding the exponents together. And so for this example, for instance, you have two to the fifth times two to the third, base is the same, adding exponents, you get the eighth power. Uh, as a result there. For the ones like this, where you have the same base, one on top, one on the bottom, you're always going to take the top exponent minus the bottom, and so you subtract the exponents there, so 6 minus 3 will give you 3, therefore 2 to the third would be your answer on that one. Again, these rules only work if you have equal bases. Okay, so you need equal bases in order to do these. For the third one here, you're raising a power to another power. When you do that, you're multiplying the exponents together, so S raised to T, you multiply those. So this one here, 3 to the fifth power is 15. You're multiplying them, not adding. You're adding when you have two separate bases. This one, power, another power, you're doing multiplication. The ones down here have to deal with negative exponents. So I have A to the negative S. You can make that as a positive exponent by putting that on the bottom. Or likewise, if you have something in this form, you can always take it back to a negative exponent. You may need to do that operation as well. So four to negative two, you can make that one over four squared, and then four squared you can do, and you can get 16 as your answer. For the last one, this is one where if you have a fraction that's raised to negative power, what you can do to make it easier to get rid of the negative exponent if you don't want to deal with negatives, is you can flip the fraction inside and then that's going to automatically change the sign of the exponent on the outside. So if we flip this, negative s will turn into a positive s. So for this one, if you take two thirds and you flip it and you get three halves, that changes the exponent on the outside and you'll get nine fourths as the answer. So these are the main ones I want to take a look at uh, for this class. So now let's go ahead and look at an example that puts all these rules to use and puts them all together. Okay, so this problem is going to put together all the properties we talked about before, so I tried to get an example that kind of covers all those properties we just did, so this problem will take care of that. First thing you, you notice here is you have some negative exponents on the outside. We like to make those positive, so one of the rules that we talked about is if you flip the fraction on the inside, it'll change this and make the outside exponent, it'll basically just change the sign of that one. So I'm going to flip the fraction on the inside. Now when you flip it, you're not going to change any of the powers on the inside. All you're going to do is simply take the reciprocal of what, which one's on the inside there. x to the negative 3y on the bottom, write that out the same as you have on top there, 3x to the fourth power, y to the negative 2. And then by doing that, that changes the power from negative into positive. I'm going to do exactly the same thing here. I want to flip that one, so I get x over y, and then when I flip that, then I'll change this to a positive. So now I've changed the negative exponents into positive. Next thing I want to do is distribute the 4 inside each of these. So this time I'm raising a power to another power. When that happens, you're multiplying the exponents. So we're going to do that for the x. Negative 3 to the 4th power, you get negative 12. y to the 1st power raised to the 4th power, that's y to the 4th. And then on the bottom, we're going to do the same thing. Now this, that's 3 to the first power, so that one has to be raised to a power of 4 also. The common mistake is to forget to take that 3 and raise it to the fourth power, but you have to in this case, because that's also technically an exponent raised to another exponent. Then you have 4 times 4 will give you 16. You're raising this power to another power, you're multiplying that, you're going to get y to the negative 8. That takes care of the first one. For the second one, you're just going to distribute that inside, x squared over y squared. Now that we've gotten rid of the exponents, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to multiply across the top and multiply across the bottom. Now when you multiply across the top, we notice that we have two x's that have the same power or the same base. So if they have the same base, you're just going to add the exponents. So I get x to the negative 10, because we're adding that, negative 12 plus 2. There's no other y to combine it with, so we'll just leave it as y to the fourth power. On the bottom, don't forget about 3 to the fourth power. So 3, it's not 12, it's, it's 3 multiplied 4 times. So 81 we have for that one. 
Uh, X to the 16th can't combine with anything, so I'll leave that as X to the 16th. And then for the Y's, we're adding this also. So I have negative 8 plus the 2, I get Y to the negative 6th. Next thing I want to do is I need to combine this together into just one X and one Y. I can do that by subtracting. So if I have the top one minus the bottom one, I can subtract the exponents. So I have 1 over 81, I have x to the negative 10 minus 16, and I have y raised to the 4. It's always the top one minus the bottom one, 4 minus negative 6. And that's going to leave us with 1 over 81, x to the negative 26, and then y to the 10th power. However, it says write with positive exponents. So I need to rewrite this, and so we'll use our negative rule that says if you have a negative, you can move that down to the bottom. And then you'll get 1 over 81 is on the bottom there. The y to the 10th is going to go on top, so I can put that there. And I have x to the 26th on the bottom. So this right here, that would end up being your final answer, y to the 10th on top, and then 81x to the 26th. All that has positive exponents.